got a great bit of tech to show you today. Just look at this thing here. This looks to me like it's straight out of Blade Runner. It's a, a video phone. There's the camera in the top. If I just take off the, the lens cap, uh, there's the receiver at the side, which happens to fall off every time you bag anything. Like that. But uh, this isn't from a movie set. This is um, straight out of the... I say straight out of quite a while ago. It came out of the BT Tower in London when it was decommissioned. It's a British telecom product, this one. And it was um, acquired by a chap called Adrian, who I believe worked there. And Adrian and his wife, Jeanette, came around the other week, dropped this off and said, I thought you might be interested in it. And I am, and I thought you might be interested in it too. It's a little bit after Blade Runner, though, of course, early 90s. Um, although Adrian was looking for some more information about it. The model's the BT VC7000. He did a bit of a search online. Couldn't find anything really at all to say about it. It's one of those things that, of course, was just sold to businesses. So, you know, there's not much documentation to be had. However, I have managed to find some information about it. In fact, I've got a little bit of a, a video I can show you here. So let me just pop it in here. And we'll just have a look at the introduction of the BT VC7000. Good evening and welcome to Tech 93. We're going to start today's program off by talking about the video phone. This is something that's long been the preserve of science fiction, however, Thanks to the latest developments in digital video, they've finally become science fact. The technology that's made this possible is something known as digital video compression. So how does that work? A normal video signal requires far too much bandwidth to enable it to be transmitted through the existing telecommunications network. So scientists have come up with a system of compression. They call this H261. This analyzes the video before it's sent and then compresses it into something suitable for transmitting down a standard line. The receiving unit at the other end then automatically uncompresses this signal to something that can be viewed on the screen as traditional video. This device requires communication speeds much greater than a home telephone line though. Visitors will need to be connected together via a thing known as the Integrated Services Digital Network, or ISDN for short. This video phone requires a minimum communication speed of 64 kilobits a second. That's four times greater than a home telephone line could handle. Of course, cutting edge technology like this does not come cheap. This particular device, the BT VC7000, has just got on sale at £7,500. And an hour's telephone call with video at the highest quality rate will cost a business approximately £168. Now that might be cheaper than an executive taking a flight to the other location, but as far as home use goes, well, I think this is one best left in the office. Back in the 90s, people say he used to look like that chap. I wonder what happened to him in the end. I think he went to prison. Now, whilst this device does work on 64 kilobits a second ISDN, it was uh, really designed to be used on dual ISDN at 128 kilobits a second. If you used it on 64 kilobits, you got reduced frame rate, I think, so somewhere between 10 and 15 frames a second. Uh, you get a 30 frames a second, or I think perhaps 25 frames a second update on this with a dual ISDN. So unfortunately, I can't demonstrate any of this. Of course, I don't have ISDN coming into my house. I can show you around the thing a little bit, though. On the top here, where the lens is, we've got a, an exposure and a focus wheel. Of course, you saw the receiver on the side there. That is really annoying, actually. It's not broken. It's, it's There's just nothing that really holds it. It just kind of rests very lightly on a almost horizontal surface. So any kind of knock, it'll just fall straight off. I'm sure anyone that ever used one of these back in the days will remember this receiver falling off every two seconds. Uh, oops. And underneath it, we've got this uh, pull-out keypad here. So this underneath explains how to use it. And uh, this is metal. This, I mean, this whole, it's heavy, this thing. 
In fact, talking of the, the weight of it, I've just got a little bit here out of a, an article from the time. And it's a music, the description of this thing does not sound like the thing you're looking at here. It says the VC7000 weighing in at under 40 pounds is a sleek integrated unit that contains a camera, monitor, standards compliant video, code, a decoder, audio system, and keypad. With its nine inch screen, it looks like a small television, but the built in handset lets it work like a phone as well as a video conferencing system. Additional interface ports, I'll show you the ports around the back, allow plug-in of an auxiliary camera, slide to video converter, PC document camera, and an auxiliary monitor. I don't know if they'd actually seen one at the time they wrote that because it goes on about it being a portable unit, a carry out style video conferencing system that can easily be transported from location to location. Everything falls off when you move it. It's um, It weighs about the same as if you've got a, a proper monitor, you know, old style CRT sat on top of a, a desktop computer and then you try to carry both things together. So yeah, this is the easy carry out device. Uh, this monitor can be tilted and it's independent of the receiver parts at the side. Uh, and under the monitor, we've got a control for brightness and then the ones for vertical hold, horizontal hold and things. You have to put a screwdriver in for those. Uh, speaker on the front here, on the left, microphone on the right hand side there. But yeah, obviously I can't do much with it at all. Uh, I can, I'll try and switch it on though. We do have a bit of a problem with this because it doesn't stay on. It will work for 10 minutes and then it will um, just switch off. Not such a big deal because there's really very little you can do with it. It comes on with a bit of information at the beginning. I'll show you some more screens out of it. It functions in much the same way you'd expect with the option for picture in picture or just to view the remote or the local camera. Much of the design language has been carried through to the current day solutions, although the interface on here is strictly text based. Now, while I show you through a few more menus, I'll just mention that this was manufactured for BT by Tandberg in Norway. That's a company that I'm much more familiar with from their open reel tape recorders. However, after going bankrupt in 1978, they pivoted into telecommunications and over time became the leaders in video conferencing and telepresence solutions, ultimately being bought out by Cisco in 2010 for $3.3 billion. Back to this device though, and in addition to normal video, you could opt to send a higher resolution freeze frame, which would be useful if you were to say attach it up to a computer and you wanted to show the people at the remote end an image from the screen. You could also hook it up to standard composite video and embed that in the call as well. Yeah, I'll speak to the IT room. Let me just, uh, let me just put them on now, hold on. Uh, yeah, they seem, uh, they seem a bit busy at the moment. Yes, that's one use I can think of putting this to now as a novelty CRT for retro games. It's a composite only input and I found that the sound on the back doesn't go through to the speaker on the device, unfortunately. It would have gone off to the people at the remote end. So you need to use external speakers for your sound. And incidentally, all the video you've seen on this screen hasn't been encoded at all. It's just a direct feed coming from either the camera or the inputs. Just reading an article here from 1993 about these video phones, it really was early days for them at this point. I mean, the trouble with science fiction is it kind of blurs your mind a little bit because you're used to seeing people with video phones in things going back decades before then. But really, the actual introduction of it in a realistic sense was in the early 90s. There were some earlier systems that had companies linked together via their own communication wires, and it was more like a closed circuit TV type system. But as far as being able to sort of dial up another center over ISDN lines. That, that was early 90s. The H261 um, standard was agreed in 1991 by the CCITT. You never guess what that stands for. It's the International Telegraph and Telephone Consultative Committee. This was agreed between Britain, Germany, France, Italy, the Netherlands and Norway in June 1991 to establish a pan-European video phone service using this H261 standard. So I found it quite interesting that H264 and more recently H265, the video codecs that we've all become familiar with, originated back with H261 that was designed to enable video phones to communicate over ISDN lines. There was home phones as well that uh, came out. BT were trying to sort of launch this um, whole video phone thing in 1993. So they also brought out this thing here. This is the, uh, I bought this a few years ago. In fact, I bought two of them and I just uh, 
plugged them in the other day and found that the uh, the cameras on them don't work. But yeah, this is a video phone. This is the Relate 2000. They launched this in 1993. Uh, we've got a little uh, liquid crystal display there, camera above it. But uh, yeah, all it seems to do is recognise light and dark on the screen. I think the CCDs died or something. And it's, uh, it's a yellowy thing. You can see that's the proper colour. Uh, the 8-bit guy, I'd love to retro bright one of these, I think, because just like you can see the difference there. But it wouldn't be worth it because this one doesn't work. Yeah, I've got two of them. I was going to connect them together and do an old style uh, video phone call. I've even got the, the brochure for this here. I remember going into the BT shop to look at one of these phones at the time and being really disappointed with the video quality. I could hardly make out my own face on it. The audio and video that was communicated over these went down a standard phone line at 14.4 kilobits a second and that video image was updated at only nine frames a second. It was very blurry as well. Even the promotional material is trying to temper your expectations by showing a pixelated image. Now these cost £399 a piece at the time but if you bought two you got a discount. I can't remember if it was either £100 or £50 off but you'd also need to of course to persuade someone else to go halves with you now, many people in the industry at the time thought BT had jumped the gun by bringing this out, believing that rather than advancing the market, an underperforming device like this was more likely to put people off the whole concept of owning a home video phone. And in hindsight, I think they were probably right with that. It's interesting to see, though, that this phone adhered to an agreed standard for home video phones. So had this taken off, in theory, you would have been able to communicate with another phone from another manufacturer that also made compatible equipment. Funnily enough, around the time that BT were launching this in the UK, over in the US, AT&T launched a video phone as well. Worked roughly as well as this one, or as badly as it, but theirs cost $1,500. Remember, this cost just £400 in the UK, probably working out about twice the price of this one, and did roughly the same thing. And probably had roughly the same amount of success or lack of it in the market. Now, it shouldn't need to be said, but this video is not the definitive history of the video phone. So if you're wondering why I wasn't mentioning, say, the Luma phone that was designed by Atari, sold to Mitsubishi, marketed in Japan in the late 1980s, which sent one black and white image to a small inbuilt CRT every five seconds or so, well, the reason is that I just wanted to show you the video phone that I've been tripping over in my studio for the last couple of weeks. Now, if you want to learn more about the subjects of video phones in general, well, there's a Wikipedia article, The History of Video Telephony, and it's a great place to start. It's a product category with more than its fair share of false starts, but interesting concepts. Over the course of my life, I've seen quite a few things go from being science fiction to reality. The video phone's one of those. I remember watching Space 1999 and they had the little, is it Comlock, the communicators with the uh, black and white screen in them. They used black and white screens on that because it synced uh, with the camera. They got a system so it didn't flicker and they had a big wire that went round down their arm and it was all CCTV. But, uh, you know, at the time, watching it, you think, oh, that'd be cool. I'd like one of those. And uh, now, I mean, you've kind of got one, haven't you? I mean, your smartphone, if you've got one, probably have a camera on the top probably make a video call with someone and you probably don't even use that function it seems so exciting to me in the 70s and 80s the idea of having a, a video phone um even just the idea of having one so plugged in in your house that you could talk to relatives over seemed uh, like a, something way off in the future i suppose it was in the early 80s but it's interesting to see how things have gone from being science fiction slowly creep their way into reality so that now when they are available to pretty much anyone who wants it they just don't seem that exciting anymore which is a bit of a shame anyway i think i've blathered on enough an interesting device and i'm surprised it's still staying on there because it would normally have gone off by this point so maybe the fault it had before has been rectified by me uh, bashing it around the house a little bit so i'll keep my eye on this and maybe i'll be able to keep using this as a monitor because i mean it is like the coolest looking monitor in the world even if the receiver likes to come off all the time. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>